Welcome back to Good Morning Arizona. Today we learned that an additional 87 Arizonans have lost their lives due to complications from COVID-19 and another 1,689 have tested positive in our state. It's always important to remember these cases we're reporting on are actual people and actual families who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Uh, so there is a very high profile dog who is reaching a large audience about how COVID-19 is impacting one family. You're taking a look at Coco the Maltese, who has about 285,000 followers on Instagram. And she, along with her sister, have been sharing their story as her dad is fighting COVID-19. He remains hospitalized in California right now. So we wanna hear how he's doing and uh, share some of these images that have really been making an impact on Coco's followers. So uh, joining us this morning, Coco, Cece, and mom, Katie. So thank you, Katie, so much uh, for being with us here to talk about Dennis and about these uh, really moving posts that you've been sharing on social media with, with your gorgeous pups, thanking the healthcare <laughs> workers and updating everybody on Dennis's journey. So how is he doing right now? And how did this all begin for you guys? Um, he's actually doing better. So that's a good thing. But uh, it started, I'm going to say with a little cough, about two days before Father's Day, we didn't think too much about the cough it wasn't a big deal. He coughs a lot. And then that Wednesday, three members of the family who spent Father's Day together tested, well, fell ill, and then they tested positive, but we didn't get those results for a few days later. Then I started feeling ill, and then he started getting other symptoms, like pins and needles, burning skin, just weird things, night sweats. So we pretty much knew at that moment. Um, Monday, he started coughing up blood, and then he was... Um, diagnosed with pneumonia, but it was just in one lung, and then it just rapidly declined from there. He, by the time I took him to the ER Thursday night, he had double pneumonia, he couldn't breathe, and he was actually placed on a ventilator a few hours after that. Uh, Katie, I've been following your your journey, and it's just been heartbreaking because it's been such a roller coaster. Um, it sounds like you know some days you're getting really positive news, and you're feeling like uh, you may maybe have the worst behind you, and then things can change. It seems in a blink. So, how has it been emotionally for for all of the people who love him, standing by and kind of you know not knowing what's coming next, and also I imagine being limited on, on how you're able to be near his side. Yeah, it's definitely a roller coaster. When people say that, that is definitely a true statement. You, you know, he he goes in, then he's on a ventilator, and then you're sad, and then he's doing well, and the settings are going down. So you're like, oh, he's doing better, and then you get a phone call. Now his kidneys are failing, and he needs to be on dialysis, and they have to put in a dialysis a dialysis line, and then you know, then he's doing better, and then you get a phone call that he's his heart is not doing well, and. It just, he has to have a central line placed in and, you know, it just keeps going back and forth. And then I think July 18th, we got the call, the bad call, um, the call that you don't want to get. And there was really not much else they could do for him. And um, they let us come into the hospital to say goodbye. And um, that was really hard. Um, and then, I don't know, he just, he turned. He came back on Monday and he started doing better and ever since he's just been doing better and better and so much better that yesterday he got to go outside and we came over to the hospital and saw him for the first time and physically touched him. When they let us in the hospital to say goodbye, we had to stand behind a glass, his glass door of his room. We couldn't go in his room. So yesterday was the first day oh. that we physically got to see him, touch him. I gave him a hug. The dog sat on his lap. It was wonderful. Oh my gosh, that's got to be so healing for him and also for you because I just think that, that that distance component to all of this must just be devastating. So I was just so touched by the pictures of seeing uh, your two little dogs oh, with his hand and I imagine that he had a wonderful reaction to that. Yeah, well, the pups actually got to go in several times to the hospital. I'm like jealous that they got to go in and we didn't. Um, once the hospital found out that they were registered therapy dogs, and they were up to date on all their shots and I had all their records. They took the dogs in to see him, obviously after he uh, tested negative for COVID. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Katie, thank you so much. I know that uh, you were you were nervous about talking about this because it is so emotional. We are sending you all of the prayers for a full recovery for Dennis. And please just uh, let us know how he's doing and we'll continue to follow uh, those pictures as your little beautiful dogs put a smile on everybody's faces. And we appreciate <laughs> that right now, especially. Thank, thank you. you.